Hey everyone, this is Mr. W. Our topic today is something called prime numbers. There's actually a lot of prime numbers, but our lesson today is going to focus on the first six prime numbers. By the end of this video, you will be able to determine and list the first six prime numbers. List the first six prime numbers in order from left to right. Okay? First prime number would be two, three, five, seven, eleven, and thirteen. So again, our first six prime numbers are two, three, five, seven, eleven, and thirteen. While that seems odd, I'll explain why that's important later. Why are prime numbers important? Uh, prime numbers are building blocks for greater numbers. Uh, they're used in the real world. They're helpful to prevent theft of uh, codes like uh, computer codes and passcodes. In math, we use them for prime factoring, which we'll do in a, a future lesson. And they're very helpful to simplify fractions, which we will also be doing in future lessons. What are prime numbers? All numbers are either prime or composite. I'm going to say that again. All whole numbers are either one of two things. Either they are prime or they are composite. But there is an exception we'll get into except for 0 and 1. And again, we're talking about whole numbers, not fractions or decimals. Some vocabulary. Let's start with prime numbers. The definition that we're using today for a prime number is a whole number with exactly two divisors. One of them has to be one and itself. And I'll show you that in a second. We could also just explain that as two factors, which really for our lesson, I'm going to focus more on factors. So for example, two is a prime number. That's a fact. Why? Well, let me show you why. The only way to get two is if I multiply 1 times 2. You notice that if I list these factors, I see 1 and 2. And remember, our definition is that there are two divisors. Remember, that could also be called a divisor because 2 divided by 2 would equal 1, and 2 divided by 1 would equal 2. But in this case, we're using factors, which is kind of like an inverse operation. There are no other factors for 2. For example, you can't say three times two, that would equal six. And there are no other ways. So that is the reason why. Remember, our definition for a prime number is that you only have how many factors? Two. So two is a prime number. Three is also a prime number. Why? Well, our definition says that it has to be two factors. And the only way to get three is 1 times 3. If I listed those factors, I would list them as 1 and 3. Remember, back to our definition, one of those factors has to be 1. And you can see that here. 5 is a prime number. Why? Same thing. The only way to get 5 is 1 times 5. If I listed that, our factors would be 1 and 5. Remember, 1, right, according to our definition, and itself. By that, we mean 
here's 5, and you can see that one of the factors of 5 is 5. That's what we mean when we say itself. Now, there's also something called composite numbers. Remember that if a number is not prime, then it has to be composite. So composite. So if a number is not prime, then it's composite, except for 0 and 1. We'll talk more about that later. The definition for a composite is a whole number with more than 2. Remember, a prime was only two divisors or two factors. Composite is more than 2. In this case, we're going to focus on, for our purposes, more than two factors. For example, 4 is a composite number. Well, why? Well, 1 times 4 equals 4, but so does 2 times 2. If I had to list my factors, I would list 1, 2. Remember, we only do that one time. And 4. When I count my factors, that's 1, 2, 3. And we said that a composite number has more than 2, and so 3 is more than 2. That's why 4 is a composite number. 6 is a composite number. One times six equals six, but so does two times three equals six. If I listed my factors, I'd get one, two, three, and six. Notice that we have one, two, three, four factors, and that is more than two. Therefore, it is a composite number. Same thing with 8. 8 is a composite number. That's a fact. Why? Well, 1 times 8 equals 8, but so does 2 times 4. If I were to list my factors, 1, 2, 4, 8, I have one, two, three, four factors, and we said that a composite number must have more than two factors. Some important ideas with prime numbers and prime and composite. Remember again that all whole numbers, meaning that not a fraction, right, or a decimal, all whole numbers are either prime or composite except zero and one. So let's talk about that just for a second. 0 and 1 are neither prime or composite. They're kind of like oddball numbers. They're not prime, but they're also not composite, so they're kind of odd. Let's see. Let's see why. Let's check 0. Remember, we said that a prime number has only two factors. Well, let's try that. Let's try 0 times 1 equals 0. And you could argue, you say, well, 0 and 1 would be two factors, right? Here's the problem with that. I could also say that 0 times 2 equals 0. And really, 0 times 3 equals 0. And I could really keep going. In fact, I could go on forever. So that would be a lot more than two factors. So zero is not prime. Now, is zero composite? Because the definition of composite is you can say, well, Mr. W, this is a lot more than two. And that is true. But according to math, a composite numbers, even though it is more than two, it has to be finite, meaning that there's a limit. Zero, the numbers are infinite, meaning that you could be writing these numbers into the millions and billions and trillions and whatever is beyond that forever for the rest of your life, and it would still equal zero. That's what we mean by infinite. So therefore, it is not, zero is not prime. 
call it a ground base, and it is not um, positive. How about one? Well, to be prime, it would have to have only two. One times one equals one. Well, we could argue and say, well, isn't that two factors? No, remember that when we list our factors, if they're the same, we only list it like that. So we only have one factor, not two. Is one a composite number? No, because we have only one factor. And remember, our definition of composite is more than two. Well, that is not more than two. Let's try some. Solve. Is seven a prime or a composite number? Well, let's find out. One times seven equals seven. Are there any other ways to get seven? No, seven is an odd number. We can't use a two. We cannot use three because three times any number. So let's write how many factors. I'm seeing one and seven. There are only two factors. And by definition, this would have to be a prime number because a prime number has only one, two factors. Solve. Is nine a prime or a composite number? Well, let's find out. One times nine equals nine. But is there another way to make nine. Well, nine is odd. We cannot use two, but how about three? Yes, if we multiply three times three, that also equals nine. There is no other way to get nine, but if we count and write our factors, we have one, three. Remember in a previous lesson, we say we don't write that twice. We just write that one time and then nine. Notice that we have one, two, three factors. Well, that's more than two, so it's not going to be a prime number. So that would be a composite because a composite number has more than two factors, and you can see that here. Solve prime or composite numbers. Well, let's look at 10. One times 10 equals 10. But can we get 10 another way? 10 is an even number, so yes. Two times five also equals 10. That gives us one, two, three, four factors. By definition, that's more than two, so I'm gonna put a big old X for composite. How about 11? One times 11 is equal to 11. Is there any other way? Can't use two. Can't use three, four, five. So there is no other way. So I'm only looking at one, two. Remember the definition of a prime number is only two factors. So 11 is a prime number. 12. 1 times 12 equals 12. But so does 2 times 6. And so does 3. I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six factors. That is definitely more than two. That is a composite number. And finally, 13. Well, the only way that I can get 13 is one times itself, right? Which is one, two factors. That would put us in the 
prime number category. Now, the question is that some young people have, is it, well, does it just even odd, even odd? And the answer to that question is no. Remember earlier on the first page, we said that two is a prime number because it has only two factors. And notice that two is an even number. So don't be tricked into thinking that it's only even numbers. Prime numbers have only two factors. Composite has, has more than two. All right. Here is your final exam, right? If you, if you wanna pause and, 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 and test yourself, circle the prime numbers. So if you feel like it, pause. But if you didn't pause, I'm going to circle the prime numbers. I know it's not zero or one because that's neither prime or composite, but my prime numbers are two, three, five, seven, 11, and 13. All of those are called prime numbers. Why? Because all of those numbers have only two factors, and we showed that on the previous pages. All right, second question of your final exam, right? List the first six prime numbers. This just means to write the first six prime numbers from left to right. If you want to pause and try it, you can. Now, yes, it's kind of cheating. It's really just that, right? But if I want to make it a little bit more challenging and scooch that off the page. Okay, our first six, it's not going to be zero. It's not going to be one, but two, three, five, seven, 11, and 13 would be your first six prime numbers. Again, in closing, the importance of the first six, and there are more, but this will be very helpful when we do prime factoring in a, in a lesson that's coming up, and also when we want to use strategies to simplify fractions. Most of the fractions we do will not go over uh, factoring it down to 13. So if you know these by memory, this will be really, really helpful. Okay, real quick, in review today, our lesson was on prime numbers. We focused on only the first six, which are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and 13. You probably want to memorize that. We talked about why it's important. We said that prime numbers have only two factors. The other kind of numbers are called composite numbers. Composite numbers have more than two factors. Okay, gave you a lot to think about today. Thanks, everybody, and we will see you next lesson.